Good morning, guys. We got it this morning to discuss about an issue that's happening in our community. And my name is Edgar Garcia, and I'm a civil engineer. Um, good morning, sir. Good morning. I'm Jerome Beatty. I'm the cost estimator. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Oh, I'm Aaron. I'm landscape architect. Good morning. Good morning. Frank Blanton, uh, landscape architect. Good morning. Good morning. I'm glad we are all here this morning. And well, let me tell you about the issue that's happening in this community. Well, 300 citizens are being affected by this. And I took, well, the problem is that they're having some erosion, pro erosion problems. So we're trying to find solutions that will help them and help us at the same time. The first solution I found was a wave attenuator. And I actually have a video for it, and, and I want to take the freedom to show it to you guys. As you guys see, it's stopping the waves from coming to shore. It's like a, it's kind of like similar to a jetty, but this is like a more um, it's the best way that we can stop waves from coming to shore. And it's a little bit less, less expensive. Two, one, action. Hello, my name is uh, Frank Blanton. I'm here to uh, discuss solutions to the causes of erosion. I like Norman. My number one concern is uh, sinkholes. As you see back here, we got a huge sinkhole. Now, I like Norman. The problem is not that severe yet. But if we do not prevent these, er these causes of erosion and take care of these sinkholes, they get developed to such things. As big as the one on there. Uh, in the order to repair the smaller ones, the ones that are uh, imperial, imperial uh, areas, or water don't sink in, like where water runs off houses, uh, sidewalks and whatnot, making those smaller ones. First you have to dig down to reach the sublayer of rock. Then you fill the rock with bigger rocks that are about four to six inches in diameter. And you work your way to smaller ones. And then you lay down gravel, and you lay down landscaping cloth, and you fill with sand and dirt. Sometimes you have to come back every couple weeks and fill it with dirt again, because as, as it all settles to the bottom, you have to make sure it stays ground level. Uh, one solution I have to these problems is uh, trench channel drains. They're U-shaped. That way, uh, water don't they don't come in like they don't run into them and then just come out again because there's too much water. It helps it all drain down. You can get uh, leaf guards that way you can prevent them from getting clogged up. Uh, and then you got 90 degree turns that way. There's no spot you miss, so you can make go all the way around. I recommend you run these across sidewalks. Any place, there's a real good cause of runoff. And right here's a, right here's a trench drain we got back here. It's pretty much, you see them in pools a lot. They may do make them for backyards. Uh, another solution I recommend we use with the trench and channel drains is uh, rain gardens. They're just loosely packed dirt with plants that have real absorbent roots. <coughs> That way you put them in the place to run off, water runs into it, don't push the dirt out, the plants soak up the water. The reason I recommend you use both of them together <coughs> is because, uh, I don't know, depending on how severe the rain is, the rain garden 
or the drain might not be enough to absorb all the water. So we're going to use them both to get the job done. Also, it also helps with the pollution and whatnot. And if, if necessary, depending if there's erosion at the shore, we're going to use seawalls. More expensive, always need constant mending and repair. Low downfalls is just it's something you have to kind of like a trial and error thing. But this not be one of my best solutions. I'd recommend we use these only if necessary. Something else we could do. If uh <coughs> if the trench and channel drains and the rain gardens don't get the job done, I recommend we add some plants. Plants. They're uh for erosion, what they do is they got long roots go down on the ground and they uh help the dirt stay together because they go all the way down. But uh but uh, it's only if we if necessary. If not, I think the I really think the rain garden and trench and channel drains will take care of it. Something else you might I recommend we check. I know houses are quite a far away back from the runoff and and if the erosion from the shore if, if it's what's going on. But there's a <coughs> sometimes water gets into the ground, runs to these <coughs> channels and they erode it. And then uh they keep eroding, eroding until the hole gets bigger <coughs> and it collapses. And then you get a hole. That's what we got back here in the house. The whole the house caves in. You got lawsuits left and right. People down your back. So I recommend the best way to find out if it's true or not, you get a. You get a geo. Technical. Engineer. You know, he'll dig into the soil, soil to make sure and he'll tell you what the dirt's doing. Some else, some other main things you can look at is that there'll be cracks in the walls. The floor will be cracked. You'll see shifting in your house. And there's uh, two main ways to fix this. One method is called uh, grouting, which is in inexpensive but unreliable. And what you do is you drill into the you drill under the house, then you fill it with cement from the bottom to the top. It's unreliable because you don't know where the cement's going. You don't know how much you need, and a lot of times after it's done, it has to be redone. Another method is underpinning. So what they do is they take piers and they dig them, they bury them under your house, all the way down to limestone. And then uh, you attach them to your house with brackets. Up here I got a picture of the process of grouting. You know, here you got your drilling, and then you got them starting to fill with cement, and you got it filled up all the way. That pretty much covers my uh, presentation. Thank you for your time.